Hello, my previous video in this playlist illustrated how we computed effective convexity. In this video, I'll show you exactly how we calculate modified convexity. I'll do that by matching the modified convexity that Bruce Tuckman shows in his table 4.6. That's chapter 4 of his book. And the answer there is going to be 25.29 years squared for the modified convexity of a five-year bond. And when we compute this modified convexity, we'll be implementing this formula here, which really looks worse than it is. It's not so bad. I'll show you how we're going to be getting this answer by computing the Macaulay convexity, which has a straightforward definition. The Macaulay convexity is the bond's weighted average of maturity squared. And then we'll just do this adjustment here to translate that Macaulay convexity into a modified convexity of 25.29 years squared. If you've been following along with me, you know that I've been rebuilding Bruce Tuckman's Table 4.6 so that this exhibit here matches his exhibit, at least for the left most four columns, one, two, three, four. Those are the same as that are shown in his exhibit. And all I've done in the Excel worksheet here is add these two columns so that I could show you exactly how he gets to the bond's convexity of 25.29. And now for units, we can say the bond's convexity is 25.29 years squared. And then if we really want to be specific, what we're showing here is this formula here, and it's a modified convexity. So it's analogous to the bond's modified duration, which happens to be 4.72 years, right? So modified duration, 4.72 years, modified convexity, 25.29 years squared. So to get there, same assumptions as before, face value of 100, coupon is 2 and 1 eighths or 2.125% per annum, but payable semi-annual, right? Six months periods, it's two periods per year. The yield is 2.092% per annum. And then importantly, with semi-annual compound frequency. It's that fact that we have a discrete compound frequency that complicates this formula. This formula would be simpler if our compound frequency was continuous, but it's not. It's discrete. So we have a slightly more complicated formula for convexity. I won't go into any detail on duration, my purpose for having it here, because I've covered duration in, in previous videos in the playlist, if you want to take a look at those, my reason for referencing them in the current video is just to analogy, just to show you the analogy, right, that Macaulay convexity is analogous to Macaulay duration and modified correct convexity is analogous to modified duration, which is to say, we'll solve for the Macaulay convexity because that has the more straightforward definition. And then we'll just divide by a term here to translate the Macaulay convexity into the modified convexity, which is the truer, more accurate measure of interest rate risk. So what we've done in previous videos, and I won't go into detail here, is compute the durations. And that is given by this column here that is shown in Bruce Tuckman where he has a time-weighted present value, right? That is the term multiplied by the present value of the cash flows here, right? For each cash flow, term times present value of cash flow. The sum of those is given here in those awkward units because it's a dollar duration. Specifically, it's a Macaulay dollar duration, not a modified dollar duration but a dollar duration in those awkward non-intuitive units that if we divide it by the price, so that's what we do right here, we take that sum, divide by price, we get the Macaulay duration of 4.77 years, and that has the straightforward English definition. The Macaulay duration is the bond's weighted average maturity. Right, very simple. Macaulay duration is the bond's weighted average maturity, this bond has a five-year maturity, so I didn't say maturity. This bond matures in five years. The Macaulay duration is the weighted average maturity, where the weights are the percentage of each cat present value cash flow 
as a percent of the bond's price. So this first cash flow here, present values of dollar as a percent of the bond's theoretical price, you can see it's a, a little over 1% uh, or about 1%. That's the weight assigned to this maturity. The weighted at the the total weighted average maturity of the bond is going to be 4.77 years. And that's all this is doing here. Term times present value of cash flow, sum those, and then come back and divide by the price is weighting each of these maturities where the weights are the present value of the cash flow as a percent of the bond's price. Now that we have the bond's weighted average maturity of 4.77 years, then we converted it, we translated it into the modified duration by using that classic formula of modified duration. That's our truest, most accurate measure of interest rate risk is Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus the yield over K, where K is the number of periods per year in our compound frequency. Here, we're throughout Tuckman dealing with a semi-annual compound frequency, so that K is 2. So that's our classic formula here in the K equals 2 situation of translating the Macaulay duration to the modified duration. And you'll notice, as we go over to convexity, the analog to that translation is right here. In other words, if we consider the rest of this, including the 1 divided by P, which I scribbled over a little bit, the rest of this is a Macaulay convexity. And then this division here translates the rest of it as a Macaulay convexity into a modified convexity. And you can see the analog here, the only difference is that this denominator is squared. So that we can proceed to the Macaulay convexity, where, remember I said the Mac Macaulay duration has a straightforward English definition. Macaulay duration is the bond's weighted average maturity, where the weights are the bond's present value cash flows as a percent of the bond's theoretical price. Similarly with the Macaulay convexity, it has a very straightforward English definition as well. The Macaulay convexity is the bond's weighted average of maturities squared. It's the only difference. The maturities squared here are each of the terms. So that my column here is analogous to what we've done with the duration. And here I've got an approximation. All this does here is take the term and square it, see the 0.5 squared, and multiply by the present value. See how that's analogous to what we did when we're calculating duration. Only this time, we're squaring the term each time. Square the term, multiply by the present value of the cash flow. And if the compound frequency were continuous, if he had made it more convenient for me in this situation, kidding, then we could just stop here at the approximation. And we would get here as a summation the analog to what we got when we're computing dollar duration. The only difference, again, being that we're squaring the term. Now, the fact that we're compounding, that we're using the discrete compounding, complicates here and shows up, complicates this formula, and is why, as, we, as this is based on a second derivative, Instead of a term squared or maturity squared, you can see we have what I would call an almost maturities squared. In, in other words, if compound frequency is continued, continuous, we would just have weighted average of maturities squared. We have this semi-annual compound frequency, which is discrete, of course. And so we instead of strictly, instead of a T squared, as each weight, we have really a T times T plus the next period, which is 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. So this summation is for each of the coupon cash flows. And then you can see that applies even at the final maturity of five years. This final multiplier here is five multiplied by 
multiplied by 5.5. Maybe I, or maybe I should just have five, maybe 5.5 like that. So that's a complication. The fact that we're with semi-annual compound frequency means that our squaring is like this. And I'm just going to call that an almost squared maturity. And so that's why I have here the exact column that takes here. It's a it's actually a product of three values, but I'm taking the term, uh, oops, sorry, the term of 0 0.5, multiplying by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So you can see I'm doing a little more than squaring. I'm almost squaring it and then multiplying that by the present value. So I'll just say almost squares multiplied by the present value, the cash flows. And so then I get an exact summation here. And if you were with me so far, you probably understand why that I would be inclined to call this value here a Macaulay dollar convexity, where the units would be very non-intuitive, but would be analogous here to the Macaulay dollar duration of the bond, such that all we need to do at that point is divide by the price. This summation here, this 2,586 divided by the bond's price, gets us the Macaulay convexity of the, then the units here are the same, just as both durations have units of years, both of these flavors of convexity have units of years squared. So our Macaulay convexity is 25.82. And just two points about that, just to reinforce what we're saying. This bond's Macaulay convexity of 25.82 years squared can be called, can be referred to as the bond's weighted average of maturity. I'm sorry, weighted average, weighted average of maturity squared. And secondly, this 25.82 represents, is formulaically represented as given exactly, the, it, it's an implementation as the way we've done it, of this right-hand term, except for it doesn't yet do this translation of the bond's weighted average of maturity squared into a modified convexity. And so that's why here is a final step. Right, I've included it here because it is a valid measure. I've included as a final step that translation here into the modified convexity of 25.29 years squared as the more accurate measure of interest rate risk sensitivity. Now, I've been exact here, and I admit the first time I ran this spreadsheet, knowing the definition of convexity as I do the English, I just ran, I just did this column in my first build. And so I would have gotten, you can see here, if I had taken this, just a, a maturity squared, which really doesn't acknowledge, or divided by price, in which case I wouldn't have really acknowledged the subtle implication of the discrete compound frequency. I would have gotten, let me just take that off, 23.44, and then for the uh, Macaulay, convexity, and then if I had divided that by 1 plus the yield over 2 quantity squared, I'd have gotten 22.95 for the modified convexity. So let me, let me just put that on similar column here. So that, that would be the result I would get if I just used the more straight up or simpler, just squaring the term. And now, would that have been a gross mistake? I don't think so, right? Even duration is a linear approximation. Convexity is the term we add as a function of the second derivative to cure or to, to fix or make an adjustment for uh, the curvature, most but not all, right? It continues to be an approximation. And so, we're still, at, we're still even when we use duration and convexity, uh, using an approximation, although we've closed most of the gap. And these kind of differences, I think, for most uses, wouldn't be uh, too, too material. So I don't think that would be a, a big mistake. 
but I did want to show you exactly how Bruce Tuckman's gets to this correct value of 25.29 years squared. So if that's helpful, please subscribe to the channel because of course I have, at the minimum, I have more fixed income videos coming. Thank you.